Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a gaming blog. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if this video or any other video on this channel helps you out. So what we're going to do today is we're basically going to define what a gaming blog is. I'm going to show you a few examples. I'm going to show you how to pick a niche and why picking a niche is so important. And then we're going to talk a little bit about niching down and why that is even more important. Then I'm going to show you how to pick a platform and get a domain name for free. Hint, you can click that first link in the description to get it free. After that, we are going to talk about installing WordPress, installing a WordPress theme, what those two things mean to you and why they're important, and then important changes you absolutely have to make in order to start getting traffic to your website. After that, we're going to start writing. We're going to talk about some ways to monetize or make money with your new gaming website and why you should share it on social media, and then about how many blog posts you should write before you can determine if your website's a success or failure. And then again, be sure to click the links in the description to get up and running today. All right, so first things first, what is a gaming blog? A gaming blog is simply where you're just going to write on gaming topics. You can write um, everything from the PlayStation 5 release to individual video games, old games, new games, games of the past, consoles that are now defunct. For example, I used to own an Atari Jaguar, one of about 3,000 people that actually own one of those, but that is what the gaming niche is. And just let me show you an example of a gaming website or a gaming blog. So if we go over to, uh, it's called thatvideogameblog.com, this is a good example of a video game blog. They're picking, the, the, because the website's so large, they can write on just about anything. When you're first getting started, and, and now I'm talking about picking a niche and niching down, when you're first getting started, I recommend that you focus on one or two small niches. For example, you could focus on PlayStation or Xbox news and rumors. You can put, focus on individual video games. I recommend that you focus on a individual topic and specialize in that topic. And to further illustrate my point, I'm just gonna show you this keyword research tool called Ahrefs. You don't have to use it. I like to use it to make my life a little bit easier when I'm finding blog topics to write. So if I just type in video games, for example, you're gonna see that's incredibly competitive. On a scale of zero to 100, it is ranked at hard, 71 hard. So that's gonna be kind of difficult for a brand new blog to start getting traffic. What we could do is we could talk about, let's say PlayStation 5, hit enter. You're gonna see that's difficult as well. That's gonna be hard to start getting traffic. What we can do is we can niche down to maybe the Division 2. Now I know that the Division 2 is an older video game, but this can work for anything. So we type in the Division, it says that it's difficult, but if we go down to matching terms, there are a number of keywords that we could potentially write on and start getting traffic. So if you look at this, right now there are 284,000 searches per month, 40,000 keywords. We can actually change the keyword difficulty to 10 or less, and you're gonna see there's some opportunity. Now in the opportunity, you have to look and see what they're writing about. As you can see, the Division 2 best weapons, you, you could create content about that. Uh, the v Division 2 cross platform, these are all different opportunities that are getting lots of questions and searches per month, and you could create content and start building an audience. Now again, once you write on the Division 2 and get your domain authority up, you can branch up or niche up and start writing about other topics, but what I think you should do in the very beginning is pick a few different video games or maybe a few different accessories and start creating content in that space. So if we jump back over to our slide deck, you can see we have talked about what a gaming blog is, we've talked about niching down, um, and now we wanna talk about a platform and a domain name. As I mentioned, you can get a domain name for free for the first year, and your domain name is simply how people are going to refer to you or reference your site. For example, that videogameblog.com, that's their domain name, and that's how humans, that's how people refer to their site. And they're using probably using some type of web hosting company. I recommend for beginners using Bluehost because Bluehost will actually get you up and running within five to 10 minutes. So basically web hosting is where you're going to rent hard drive space from a third party like Bluehost and they're going to host your website so people from around the world can see it. And I would say about 55% of the entire internet uses WordPress, and that's what I recommend for somebody that is just getting up and running. Now, as you gain more experience, you can look at other things, but if you're brand new to blogging and creating a website, you wanna use WordPress because it's going to allow you to write much faster. Most likely, these guys are using uh, WordPress right now. Without doing a little bit of research and digging, I won't be able to, um, I, I won't be able to dig further into it. But 
So what we're gonna do next, we are going to walk through the steps of getting web hosting through Bluehost, and we're gonna get that domain name for free. It's gonna take us probably about four or five minutes, step by step, to get everything that you need. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click Get Started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click Select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're gonna get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog, but for the next step, just click skip because we know what we're doing and I'm actually gonna tell you what to do so that we can get up and running. Click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on. Just click skip here and click skip here. And then just pick the first one in the far left. Make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you. They have both free and premium themes, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So right now it's actually creating your WordPress website. In just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but now we have our website as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon. And so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's gonna say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like, but for everyone else outside of your network, it's gonna say coming soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated. And then we can go through and make the necessary changes, which I'll cover in just a moment. So we're gonna deactivate them and then delete them. Now you wanna make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website. The more plugins you have, the slower your website's going to respond and, and function, and you're gonna lose out on ranking. So make sure you have a lean setup, very few plugins, and then move on. As you can see right now, I'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need. Uh, if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're gonna talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them. And then we're actually gonna start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so now that we have Bluehost, our web hosting company, and we have our WordPress theme installed, what we need to do, and what I recommend, is that you go out and get a premium WordPress theme. A WordPress theme will change the look and feel of your website. Right now you have a basic theme, which doesn't really come with any features. If we take a look at the website here, thatvideogameblog.com, this is a WordPress theme, it's probably a premium theme, 
where they have different features and functionalities. Now you can actually use a website called themeforce.net. There is a link in the description. The second link in the description, in fact, will take you right over here to um, themeforce.net. And you can just type in different niches or niches and you can find a blog that meets your needs. As you can see, I just typed in gaming and the cost of the WordPress themes will vary between 20 and maybe a hundred dollars. What I recommend that you do is spend some time and find different WordPress themes that will work best for you. Now, the cool thing with a premium theme is they do come with additional plugins. Those plugins add additional features. Maybe you want a countdown timer for the next new big release. You could actually find a WordPress theme that includes that. So what I recommend that you do is find one that you like, click on this right here to add it to cart and then check out. When you check out, you're going to buy your WordPress theme. When you buy, after you buy the WordPress theme, you are going to download the zip drive to your computer. Once you get that zip drive, unpack the zip drive and you're going to find a second zip drive. The reason why we want that second zip drive is if we go back to my dashboard here, we are going to upload that new WordPress theme. And to do that, we're gonna to go to appearance. We're gonna click on themes. When we click on themes, we're gonna click on add new, and then we're going to click on upload theme. You're gonna drag and drop that second WordPress zip drive your new wordpress theme you're going to drag and drop it right in here or you can even click and and manually get to it by choose file once you get it over here you're going to install it and then you're going to activate it and you're going to have a brand new theme so after that we are going to start writing to write we're going to go up to posts and in the previous section i showed you the settings that you need to change one of them was posts so what we're going to do is we're going to click on add new and we need to title our blog post what I recommend that you do is come back over to Ahrefs or whatever keyword tool you decide. We are going to copy our keyword. This is what people are actually searching and we are going to paste it right here into our WordPress page. Now, the reason why you wanna do that is because people are going over to Google or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo and they're typing in this exact phrase. For example, if we come over here and we just paste this in, you can see people are typing in this exact phrase. And when I click on this, dualshockers.com, you can see at the very top, the division two crossplay. And what they've done is they've included the title, as I showed you, as the post name. And so this is gonna help with search engine optimization. Now, as you become more familiar with blogging, you're gonna hear this term a lot. And so just know that this is what you should do. This is the right way to do it. And so what we're gonna do here is we've got our post title and that's an, called an H1 tag. Now we need to figure out exactly what to write. Two questions that I always get. One, how long should a blog post be? And two, how do I get started? And for me, to answer the first question first, the blog post should only be as long as it needs to be. You need to make sure that you are creating enough content where you're answering the question thoroughly, but not so much content where you're just diluting your post. If your competitors are writing a 1500 word blog post about this topic, you should write 1500 to 1000, 2000 as well. If your competitors are, are writing a 4000 word blog post, you should be writing a 4500 word blog post on the same topic. You don't need to write a 5000 word blog post on something that can be answered with a 1000 words. That's going to be overkill. And that's going to be kind of a waste of time. Now let's figure out how to start writing. What I like to do is I like to take 10 minutes before I start writing. And I like to do who, what, when, where, why, spell some words right here, and how. And so uh, before I actually write my blog post out, I'll take 10 minutes and I'll just ask myself questions. And I'll make a little bullet so that I can use these bullets to flesh out my answer and write a good blog post. For example, I might come over here and say, who, who would be interested in um, the division two cross platform. Um, so I might use that as a subheading. Now, not all of them are going to be good ideas. This is going to help with your brainstorming phase. You might be, people might go out and ask, uh, what is cross platforming? And that's gonna be something that you're going to wanna answer because it's going to help your reader learn and gain more information. Uh, uh, what platforms allow cross platforming. Um, so we could say what, we could say which platforms, which we'll just put which platforms allow 
cross platforming. And believe it or not, people are asking these questions and it's your job to solve it. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna turn this into an H2. As you can see, this is a, a subheading. If this is our heading, this is a subheading. And we're simply going to answer the question. This is going to help us rank in Google, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo. And so now that we have our, our outline, we're just gonna go in and fill in the bullet points and then turn it into a blog post. Once we're done, we're gonna click on publish and we have written our first blog post. Congratulations. After that, we are going to go to, let's see, we're on the start writing phase. The next step is to figure out how to make money. Now, there are a number of ways to make money in the gaming niche. So the first thing that we can do is we can place ads, as you can see right here, this one for the, the makeup and Squarespace, those are ads that are placed. Now you can get started with Google AdSense. This Google AdSense, Google AdSense is like an entry level ad network that will work with most companies, most websites. And so what you'll do is you'll create an account, you'll automatically place ads, and then you'll get pennies on a dollar. You're not gonna make a lot of money until you start seeing 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 page views per month. When you hit those marks, you wanna look at other ad networks like Ezoic, AdThrive, and Media.net. They're gonna pay you a little bit more. You're gonna to have to work a little bit more with some of those other networks, but um, you're going to make a little bit more when you start doing it that way. And so that's just one way to make money. Another way you can make money is with affiliate marketing. And with affiliate marketing, you're simply going to recommend or sell other people's products. Now, the cool thing with the gaming niche, you can be an affiliate with Amazon Associates and you can recommend gaming chairs and bean bags and, and controllers and all sorts of stuff. But there's other affiliate programs out there and you don't have to just rely on Amazon. There are gaming chair companies where they'll actually pay you 10%. You can actually be uh, an affiliate for like um, individual video games and consoles. There's so much opportunity out there. The third link in the description is a complete guide to learn affiliate marketing for free. Definitely click that third link if you wanna learn more about affiliate marketing, but there's a lot of options there. Another way to make money is you can sell your own digital or physical products. Maybe you've created a walkthrough, a guide for the division two. You could package that up, sell it for $4.99 and you have a list of buyers. So there is opportunity there as well. Maybe you have gaming t-shirts you wanna sell. You can sell those right on your website. That is outside the scope of this video, but there's opportunity there as well. After we look at different ways to make money, you wanna share it on social media. Now, the reason why you wanna share your blog and blog posts on social media is because it will take a little bit of time before Google picks up your website and your blog post. So if you wanna kind of get the fire started, you share it on relevant social media sites. For example, you could find different subreddits to share it as long as you have permission. You can actually share it on, on Facebook groups. You could create your own Facebook group, um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. You can share it anywhere as long as it's relevant. You wouldn't wanna share your video game website to people that are interested in makeup or basket weaving. That's not gonna be congruent. The final step that you are going to wanna do is continue to write. Now, I recommend that you have at least 50 blog posts before you determine if your site is a success or failure. Ideally, I recommend that you write 50 blog posts, one blog post every single day. At worst, write one every other day, but you want to get to 50 just to see if your website starts getting traction. Um, don't stop after 10. You will be disappointed in yourself because 10 is not enough time to see if you're going to build a following and gain traction. Write at least 50. Write one every day or one every other day until you meet that mark. Then you can step back and analyze. So make sure you click the links in the description to get up and running. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you're notified when I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.